Ronda Rousey is still making excuses for losing to Holly Holm. My mouth guard was oh bad. My I literally God. came into that fight concussed from slipping down some stairs already after our, all of these years of uh, concussions. And then the <sighs> You already know where I'm going with this. Off is the direction you can fuck. What's up, the people? It's your boy Blaze here, back to you with another one here for Venomous Reactions. And today we're gonna be taking a look at why people are laughing at Ronda Rousey's failure. Ooh, you know people can be brutal on the internet, man. Especially if you're like a polarizing figure, such as Ronda Rousey. But Ronda has not been too endearing to the public. I mean, we all know her run in UFC and, and WWE. Uh, she has made quite a few people cringe at the fact at her performance. So, and it's not just her performance, it's her demeanor at times. So we're going to see what they're talking about in this one. Why people are laughing at Ronda Rousey's failure. So without further ado, let's get into it. She might have 17 million followers, but with only a couple thousand likes per post, it's safe to say Ronda Rousey has only a few active fans. Through hypocrisy, Ooh. a massive ego, and undeniable delusion, Ronda Rousey has become one of the most unlikable athletes ever. Recently wrecking- Your ego will kill your career faster than anything. And for Ronda Rousey, she walked around like she was like the baddest woman on the planet. And at one point of time, she was. But then, we we go against people uh, that are, I guess you could say, bigger and better. Oh, they will humble your ass real quick. And whew, that that match with Holly Holm, yeah, she got humbled in the worst way possible her final career opportunity and sparking a mass exodus of social media followers. So why are people so happy to see her fail? Well, arrogance, that's why. What makes me so confident that I can win is I'm the greatest fighter in the world. Now, in the beginning, Ronda's <laughs> arrogant statements were at least partially justified. She'd spent four years winning every fight available, although there was one massive issue. Nine out of her 12 fights were won using the exact same move. Submission mm. via armor. Fans would therefore label Ronda a one-trick pony because while and having that in your arsenal, um, just winning by armbar submission, uh, that just that just shows the lack of ability in Ronda Rousey's case. Uh, because as we all know, um, Ronda was not savvy with the striking portion of MMA, as we all know, but. When it came to submissions, oh, she was on that expeditiously. But when it came to striking, whoo, yeah, she got humbled in that portion, unfortunately. Being extremely skilled at arm bars, she was seriously lacking in other MMA areas. Mm -hmm. As far back as 2012, people wrote, Does anyone else think Ronda Rousey is greatly overrated? Her striking game is almost non-existent. Is she a good judoka? Absolutely. Ouch. Is she a good mixed martial artist? Not at all. And Ronda had a very limited approach. She didn't kick, and she wasn't necessarily Damn. a more skillful boxer. She didn't really have a tremendous amount of experience. Her lack of striking ability has since been featured in compilation such as this one while people were even commenting at her peak anytime I need inspiration I watch her hit a heavy bag or shadow box if she can make it to the UFC with that sloppy garbage <laughs> then anything is possible despite her obvious weak spots Ronda maintained her arrogance I know the level of my striking is at and um, that's one of the advantages that I have is they don't really know which even extended to her personal life I really wouldn't want to waste any time on a guy that is easily intimidated by me 
I mean, there's more than too many things in life than me. So right. if that stopped you already, then you're just saving my time. Although there was no better example of arrogance than her 12th and final <laughs> UFC win. The autistical look on her face as if she couldn't be beaten by anyone. Ronda I remember that fight. <laughs> if that wasn't the quickest way to humble somebody, Mm-mm-mm. Holly Holm knocked the bejesus out of Ronda Rousey that night. <laughs> and I remember that night, man, me and the homie went out. We saw the fight. And we was just left in shock. Due to the fact that uh, <laughs> Holly Holm basically kicked her to another dimension, <laughs> basically. And she got humbled. She got humbled. But leave it to Ronda Rousey, she would never admit that. If you know, you know. Ronda refused to show even the smallest bit of humility, and as explained by one of the yep. comments, this was probably the worst thing that could have happened to Rousey. This fight was her downfall as it made her far too confident in her bad striking. It did. And she never felt the need to improve anything, which was especially Thanks. bad given her next opponent was Holly Holm, a 19-time boxing world champion. Mm -hmm. In the lead up to their fight, Holly was humble and extremely kind. As far as Rhonda's performances, not just some of them have been impressive, all of them have been impressive. So, I mean, nobody can argue with that. While Rhonda was extremely rude, maintaining that nobody could ever beat her. Beating Holly Holm is definitely in my hands and I'm gonna do it. Rhonda's arrogance was even worse in other interviews. I'm great at uh, When it comes to sports, man, you can't have a massive ego and you can't be arrogant. You get too overconfident and highly arrogant. There's gonna be someone that you encountered that will humble your ass and make you sit the hell down as you Rhonda just found out when she went against Holly Holm in her last UFC fight. <laughs> I find it apropos that her last UFC fight, she lost. Like, Holly Holm, it humbled her so much that she was embarrassed. And she ran. <laughs> she ran away from the UFC. And... <laughs> oh, Rhonda, Rhonda, Rhonda. How the mighty have fallen. Tragic. This. I'm the best at this. I'm more prepared than she is for this, and I'm gonna win on Sunday. Everyone's gonna see. Still refusing to show <laughs> a single shroud of humility. I'm better than every other girl in every area of MMA. And my <laughs> striking is different, and I think I'm the best at it. When the day of their fight <laughs> finally came, Hozzy refused. And while Rhonda had just four weeks prior stated, She can try and kick me in the head, but it's not gonna go like that. The way she wants. This is exactly how Cap. the fight ended. Holly knocked Rhonda out with a kick to the head, with Rhonda's Ooh. face from before and after the fight confirming she'd been completely humble. Well, just kidding. Oh, she Rhonda was. Rhonda refused to accept that Holly was simply better. I think that it's probably just hard for her to really maybe admit that. I was just the better fighter. And instead began to make braggy excuses for why she lost the match. It was my third title fight in nine months, and I don't think anyone's ever even attempted that before. And um, that's a lot. I think the one thing that was different, I just kind of felt tired. Ronda then tried to make the audience feel bad for her. What a <laughs> this is the thing that kills me. I mean, you lost badly, don't get me wrong. But you want to go ahead and play victim. Where does that work? Where in the Western Hemisphere of hell is that logical? Like, you got humbled. Admit it. You got humbled. Uh, let me stop before I get a damn ulcer. Am I anymore if I'm not this? And I was literally sitting there and like, I'm like, I'm nothing. I'm like, oh, what do I do anymore? No one gives a about me anymore without this. Although the comment section wasn't having any of it. You know, Rhonda's ego was so out of control as she thought herself unbeatable. She had no exactly. respect for anyone and trashed all of her opponents. She deserved to get knocked out and brought down to earth. In an article titled Rooting for Rhonda Rousey is Tough and it has nothing to do with her loss, ESPN highlighted that Rhonda had publicly smeared Floyd Mayweather for his history of domestic violence, yet she was dating another MMA fighter who had been accused of domestic violence 
violence himself. To make matters worse, the article brought up Rhonda's 2015 uh, book in which she talked extensively about assaulting her ex-boyfriend. She punched him in the face with a straight right then a left hook. When he still wouldn't move, she slapped him again, then grabbed him by the neck of his hoodie, kneed him in the face, and tossed him aside on the kitchen floor. The incident ended, she said, at her car when he tried to prevent her from driving away and she pulled him by the neck of the hoodie again, dragged him out onto the sidewalk, and left him writhing there. This might explain why- I find that incredibly insane. That she would date someone that had a history of domestic violence, but she got on um, Money Mayweather on his bout with domestic abuse. Again, where is this logical at? I, the more I think about it, the more I lose brain cells. I can't. Why Ronda also began to claim that she could beat the male heavyweight UFC champion stating, you cannot tell me that it's physically impossible. It is possible that in any given moment that I could beat him. I simply believe in my possibilities. <laughs> UFC fighter Ian McCall oh. politely responded, she's dangerous, she's good, I get it, but it's just silly. Meanwhile on Reddit, <laughs> people silly. dumped on Ronda mercilessly. In any given moment, under the right circumstances, I think it is possible. Sure, but arm barring a man while he is sleeping is just a dick move. But hey, it's Ronda. A different user then shared this video showing that Ronda couldn't even keep up during a sparring session and therefore added the comment, with this video anyone with the deduction skills of an 8 year old would have to say a 250 pound cane would have as much trouble with Rousey as maybe a really angry toy poop. That is cold. Look, this, this is what I mean, man. It's Social media can be cold, especially when you're a polarizing figure. And that video, ooh, Rhonda, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. I'm sorry, that that just wasn't it. Poodle. Ironically, Ronda couldn't even win against those in her own division, which only became more obvious in her next fight after Holly Holm. One year after getting owned by Holly, her opponent, Amanda Nunes, who knocked Ronda out after only 48 seconds. Ronda's face from before and after the fight was again extremely poetic, with the top comment stating Holly took her to school and Amanda straight up expelled her. Such an embarrassing Damn. loss for one of the most arrogant, ungracious fighters in MMA. Love to see it. In the Lead up to the fight Shit. that you had said about Ronda. If she doesn't win impressively, I think this is her last fight. If she loses, I don't think we ever see her again. Which turned out to be true, although Ronda still was to admit that she wasn't the better fighter. Do you think about the last couple fights? Do you think about the last fight against Amanda or, or Holly? I think I'd just rather not talk about that right now. Poor Ronda, she still can't get over those two losses in the UFC. <laughs> You can clearly tell every time someone asks her questions about her return to MMA. She posted a Oh yeah. Based on those two dramatic losses. <laughs> uh yeah, Rhonda was never the same after that. To a point where she basically just called it quits on MMA in its entirety. And then she transitioned to being in the WWE. And I have a feeling. I have a feeling they're going to touch on this. I'm waiting for it photo to her Instagram reading, and so rock bottom became the solid foundation on which I rebuilt my life, which turned out to be accurate, as she'd soon find another chance at repairing her public image. In mm. January 2018, Ronda Rousey signed a full-time WWE contract. Mm -hmm. You're doing this full-time now, right? This is your, this is your job? Full time, they, they got me for a multi-year deal. And after her debut match, she was surprisingly loved by the audience. The Washington Post wrote, The match exceeded she expectations, was. with fans firmly behind Rousey, even breaking out into yes chants at points, while comments on the debut video read, Glad to see her smiling again. Reminds me of when she first started her MMA career. She yeah, when she came to the WWE, yo, she, she reminded me of the Ronda Rousey of yesteryear during her days of UFC and in the beginning yo she was basically she was basically on point you know promo skills needed a little bit tweaking here and there but she was believable on the screen during her first initial run but later in the years 
I can't say to say. She was so genuine here, hard to see why anyone could hate her. I'm actually excited to see her. I just hope Vince doesn't screw this up. <laughs> Although as highlighted by a later comment reading, it's impressive how she managed to turn both the MMA and wrestling fan bases against her. Her WWE like ability wouldn't last long. Because mm. the show chose to pin Ronda against an even more beloved wrestler, Becky Lynch. And as a result, Ronda was painted as the villain and booed by fans during every single match. As a part yep. of their storyline, and Becky was arrested, posting the mugshots to her Twitter where Rhonda <laughs> completely lost it. That's what I'm trying to do, dumbass. You hobbling around trying to be a ginger crutch ninja and taking <laughs> fake prison photos in the hallway what? is helping. Becky responded with, keep that F word out of your mouth and concentrate on getting better at this business instead of trying to remain above it. Looking Ooh. forward to seeing you real soon. Rhonda then... Ooh, the man with the savage burn. Ooh, but she wasn't lying. Like, you might want to learn the business while you're in it instead of trying to go and cut corners like you did in your MMA career because you ain't going to cut no corners here because once people find out that you're trying to cut corners and get that superstar, special star treatment, like you're entitled, oh, they are going to turn on you and they would not care what you do in the ring, you could you could put on the most fantastic event ever, but they won't forget that entitled feeling that you're passing along you're passing along in the atmosphere. Oh, game over, game over. And responded again, stating, "F word? You mean fake? Fake like your nonsensical BS armbar that doesn't even work and just looks like you're holding the dick you wish you had." Before doubling Ooh. down by writing, "I don't care what the script says. I'm beating the living shit out of you the next time I see you." But while the drama seemed to have been set up by the show, Ronda continued to bash the WWE on her YouTube channel. Is that an act? I'm not going out there and doing their fucking act anymore. I meant that I'm going to disrespect the sport that they all love so much. It's scripted. It's made up. It's not real. Less than a month later, WWE took Ronda off the show, yet she only continued to bash them, writing, anyone who is outraged by me calling pro wrestling fake fights for fun has never been in a real fight. While you all are tiptoeing around bruising some pro wrestlers' huge soft egos, no one is thinking about all the real fighters you're insulting when pretending pro wrestling is somehow on the same level of realism. Rhonda then appeared on Steve-O's podcast again called <laughs> Rhonda this is where you should have known you fucked up because you may say wrestling is scripted and whatnot but you're out there you're out there in the ring and you're performing in front of a live crowd you know a whole lot of mishaps can happen and injuries are real so to say to say that wrestling is fake i mean you may be entitled to your opinion but the injuries that come with that and the risks they put out in that ring day in and day out oh no that is far from fake but you gonna learn today girl <laughs> Calling Idiot. wrestling fake. To have him like fake fights for fun. Like, I love choreography. I love acting. I love theater. Before bravely bashing her fans. Spending my time on energy on a bunch of fucking ungrateful fans that don't even appreciate me. And claiming she'd never return to WWE again. I'll never to be full time again over 200 days a year like that ever again. The irony was that three years later, Ronda <laughs> did exactly that, albeit with the attitude. And uh, how ironic is that? How ironic is that? She says she would never be back, but let some time pass. And she came back for her second run. And I will say this, and I will stand on it. Her second run was ass. <laughs> you, you can disagree with me or not. I perfectly don't care. But this is my opinion, and I'm standing on it. Her second run was ass. Her promo work was horrendous. And the performance, uh, not as energetic as her first initial run, but I'm just saying, that's my viewpoint.
that she was too good to even be there. Can't speak for anyone else, but for me, it really shone through that she wasn't enjoying herself, especially with the complaints about fan reactions. She never looked like she wanted to be there and acted like pro wrestling was beneath her. Whether true or not, it's how it came off. I mean, come on now. You know fans is gonna sound off if you're if you're just like pretty much a robot there. Like you're not enjoying the sport. You're not enjoying the realm of professional wrestling. People are gonna sound off on it and they are gonna be vicious and tear you a new one. And and Rhonda made that vividly clear to, just through her demeanor alone. Like she was there, she was there just to be there. Like, she really wasn't there for the enjoyment of it. Tell, tell me when I'm telling lies. Hashtag Fire Ronda Rousey therefore began a trend on Twitter, <laughs> which became yep. a reality only four months later, as she'd be booted from wrestling again. With almost zero <laughs> career prospects, Ronda Rousey agreed to an extensive Raid Shadow Legends deal and has spent the last year writing another book, the release of which has made her a total laughing stock. Over the last month, she's promoted the book on various podcasts, leading to a Reddit post showing that nine years later, Ronda Rousey is still making excuses for losing to Holly Hunt. Home. My mouth guard was oh bad. I literally God. came into that fight concussed from slipping down some stairs already after our, all of these years of uh, concussions. And then I had. <sighs> you already know where I'm going with this. Off is the direction you can fuck. <laughs> oh my God. It's been years since the epic fight against Holly Holm. And you're still making excuses. Just, oh my God. I, I, I quit. I fucking quit. I had an absolutely terrible weight cut, which, you know, you have, that means you have less fluid in your brain to concut, to protect it. Rhonda then made even more excuses on Steve-O's podcast. I have no ACL. I tore my ACL falling down that stairs two weeks before that fight, the home fight. Leading to some pretty funny comments such as, Tore my ACL, had a concussion, bad weight cut, I had bubble guts, my car wouldn't start, my dog ate my homework, and I've had scoliosis since I was three. So yeah, didn't really lose, did I? Ironically, Ronda... <laughs> excuses after excuses after excuses! <laughs> God, she made up every excuse in the book as to why she lost. Like, get the fuck out of here. Uh, I can't. Also stated this. I'm the greatest fighter that is that has ever lived because I've never been faster, never been stronger, never had a better grasp of the game. I've never been so much better than everybody else. Yet when Steve-O kindly offered props to Logan Paul, Ronda Rousey refused to accept it. How about Logan Paul? Like him or dislike him? That dude is a performer. Yeah. He, he's great on the mic. He does a great job on the mic. But and I mean, I, I wish that I was allowed the time to rehearse that he gets because it's not, not evenly spread. It's, it's frustrating that like everybody doesn't get that treatment. Ronda is jealous that Logan is already a better wrestler than she ever was. I think she might yep. be unhappy with how her run in the WWE went, but I don't know anything really about that. It seems Ronda Rousey has burned every bridge she could possibly burn, which which when combined oh, she with her complete lack of fans makes it highly likely her career is done and dusted. Oh my god. I see why people is laughing at Ronda Rousey. Her statement, her demeanor, her ego, her arrogance. It, it just smells like... It just smells like a one boiling pot of disaster. And... The fact that she can't even be humble, that's the killer part. It's years later and you still can't humble yourself saying that you lost clean. Like get the, get the fuck out of here. Oh man. But, but I, I, have to, I, have to, I have to give kudos to Logan Paul, man. You know, like he, he can't speak on things that he doesn't know much about, but that one statement that you know what 
she may be unhappy with how her WWE run ended and as she should because the way she acted, the way she felt like she was entitled to the to the higher treatment, the special treatment, whatever you want to call it. It's you can't be you can't be unappreciative of the opportunities that you have. Because if you if you act the way if you act in that manner, guaranteed people is gonna ridicule you to the highest level of ridicule. As Rhonda is now finding that out the hard way. But yo, let me know what your thoughts are about this one, man. Yo, yo, does Rhonda Rousey deserve to be laughed at or what? Yo, let the comment section have it. And as always, thank y'all for tuning in. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this one. And don't forget to tell your peoples across the globe. Come kick it with your boys. Just one get solid time. Like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to click that bell so you don't miss a video from the kid. You heard me. And please feel free to follow me on social media right over yonder. And this is your boy Blaze saying Chuck the Deuce. And I will see y'all in the next video. And I'm out.